Hi, my name is Matthew Wells. I'm the VP of product management for our G Digital Manufacturing business. I want to welcome everybody for attending this session and thank you for joining. We have some very exciting news to share around our new Prophecy 2022 portfolio update. We do have uh, an esteemed panel uh, here today to talk you through the, uh, the releases that we'll, we'll hear about today. Um, each of them will introduce themselves at the beginning of, uh, of their section. Okay, so first off, I want to get into talking about the overall strategy. So this is a slide that you know we've shown last year. Um, we have made a, a few updates to it, um, but it does reflect our overall uh, str strategic view. Um, on the left-hand side, you know, you'll see a number of uh, key themes that we talk about when, we, uh, when we're talking with our customers about our strategy. The first one is around connected workers. So this is really about creating the modern experience for the modern worker. And includes things like remote operations, mobility, all themes that you will hear about in our product releases. The next one is smart factory. And that's really around you know, generating uh, insights and turning your factories into, um, you know, new uh, or, or high performant uh, um, plants based off of a number of key things that we're doing, like around introducing NPI flexibility, integrated supply chain, and of course, process optimization. The third category is enterprise operations. And this is really around enabling our customers to manage a portfolio of plants. You know, not just one, but many, both from like configuration and data perspective. And then the last one really is a new one for us. It encompasses um, the traditional concepts of lean, but also really a heavy focus on circularity and sustainability. And so this is this is a, a, a really a new area, both for our customers and for us. And it's really where we're looking at things like how to integrate reusable packaging, for example, how to integrate energy consumption into the manufacturing processes and help our customers both manage that and see that better. If you look across to the to the to the right hand side, um, what you will see you are some some sub themes there, right? So when we talk about enterprise operations, you know, enterprise management, if you will, we really think about it from two perspectives, aggregating data to make the data more useful, as well as managing configuration and systems from an enterprise level. And then next to that, you'll see production optimization. And this is really around smart factory. And we have two key initiatives here, one of which we'll, you'll hear about today, product orchestration. And this is where we're really enabling our customers to integrate you know, the bill materials, the recipes more effectively with the shop floor. And then the second is around integrated supply chain. And then of course, you know, we have our core products, um, HMI SCADA, MES, and Historian. And we've had we've executed many different improvements in those various categories. Notably, we've also, we've been working a lot on integrating them together and really have key themes around scalable architecture, creating a single pane of glass for our customers, and as well as integrated security, so our customers are more effectively able to use our products together. And on that point about using our products more effectively together. I bring you the, the Prophecy 2022 Unified Product Launch. Um, this is really exciting for us. This is the second year that we've been doing this, right? We started last year um, in January, releasing all our products together. And so we've continued this cadence. Uh, so this is the second year we're doing it. Notably, you'll, you'll see that we've changed the naming for the product portfolio. So we've, we've changed from individual product release numbers to having a combined 2022 version number for all our products. So you'll see Historian 2022, iFix 2022, Plant Apps 2022. We did this really to help our customers, you know, get a, a solid um, understanding of what products we've validated together from an interoperability perspective, as well as making it easier to understand, you know, the, the timelines at which these products were released in and makes that easier to manage. Um, it's one thing I really do want to note, and Rambier will cover this in more detail, is we have integrated a low-code, no-code data engine across the portfolio. And so this is Operations Hub. And this is, this is something, again, we started last year, 
And we have continued to uh, move forward uh, in this release. And again, we will continue to do so, do so in more detail as well. We've also started to create common configuration and even a common installation tool. Now for common installation, we've only done this for iFix and Historian in this particular release. But again, in future releases, you can expect this to continue. And again, the whole point here is to enable our customers to have a simpler and easier experience in both managing and installing our products. At this point, I will turn it over to Rambir, who is leading our automation software portfolio. Thanks so much, Matt. And as Matt said, so I am the Director of Product Management for the automation portfolio, which includes iFix Simplicity, as well as Badge, Tracker, and Workflow. And I'm excited to show you what we're doing this year. All right, so you know, I want to start off by just talking about we have kind of four key pillars that we're focused on in our multi-year plan and vision for the HMI SCADA space. And really, you know, this is our goal is to create our next generation version of our HMI SCADA platform, starting with the core engine. So, you know, we're not just investing in new capabilities uh, or enhancements, but also in the core engines when it comes to things like scalability, performance, and high availability. Secondly, what's something you'll hear from Joe and Steve as well is this continuous theme of us trying to help you make it easier to build and deploy and manage multiple servers and systems through central management and central configuration. And really, I think this will be really helpful for, for uh, staff because what you can really do is have one place to be able to configure and manage all the different servers and systems within the Ash One enterprise environment. Thirdly, uh, as Matt mentioned, I'll go into more details. It's about creating our common visualization platform across the entire portfolio with Operations Hub. And you know, and there's a lot we're doing here and we're super excited about it, but over time, this will become everything from our core HMI builder, as well as for MES, as well as for historian analysis. And lastly, uh, you know, as we're seeing, especially with the acceleration uh, due to COVID, the idea of having the ability to have easy access to information, data, and visualization, not just in the control network, but also outside of that, up, upwards even into the cloud and across the enterprise. And so we really have this key theme of how do we help the workers across the entire enterprise, even centrally and remote. All right, and so let's go a little bit more detail specifically about iFix and Batch. Um, so some of the key things we really focused on was the journey we started with uh, with the 6.5 release on modeling. And you know what we're really focused on here is how do we reduce time to be able to get new equipment uh, you know, into your SCADA system or be able to enhance what you have with context through modeling. And so one thing we really focused on this release was enabling you to have more variation when it comes to equipment, but still have the same definition of the type of equipment, for example, a pump. Secondly, we also focused on making it easier to access the data from those equipments through the PLCs and browsing them. And, and then, then the third thing, which uh, Matt mentioned as well, is uh, we're really focused on creating it easier for you to do updates by having a single installer that is very simple and quick and really reducing the time it takes to go from one version to another. And then, so this is really starting with iFix and Historian, but this will be expanding to the entire portfolio. And then the last one, you know, which is also really critical, is um, we really focused also on trying to make it easier for you to be able to do authentication and authorization across the Prophecy Suite with uh, our Prophecy Authentication service. And what we're doing here is also then adding more capabilities such as multi-factor authentication, nested AD groups as a part of that service. So you can be able to really easily connect to the users and be able to configure them. And then secondly, um, the second key theme here really is about cost of ownership. Uh, one of the exciting things that we are doing is uh, we're adding new types of uh, bundles of how we are actually letting you purchase the product. And, and so we are adding some unlimited client offerings as well. And uh, you know, please reach out to myself and the sales team if you want to learn more about that. Uh, the real key here was that we want to make it really easy for you to be able to leverage the products in a way that's most effective for everybody within the plant. Uh, and then another key theme you'll see across the, all of our teams is uh, a focus on enabling customers who are moving to the cloud to leverage our products. And so uh, across both Simplicity and iFix, and so I'll mention right here, and as well as Operations Hub, 
we're supporting both Azure and AWS VMs. So you can do things like having more central operations, having some of your, even your SCADAs or HMIs or historians and, and analysis uh, in the cloud or on-premise. And then coming back to, as I mentioned about core SCADA capabilities, we continue to focus on the core engine as well. And the, one of the things we did is increasing the tags per data type. And then lastly, I just also want to mention, um, we also continue to invest in a batch. And one of the exciting things we're doing at this release is we started moving the operator execution aspects of batch into operations of our common visualization platform. So on the simplicity side, uh, coming back to kind of time to solution, one of the key things we did here, which we're super excited about is uh, supporting Python server-side scripting. This was like the number one ask from our customers and we're starting with Simplicity uh, and then we'll be doing this also in iFix in the new year. But really this is really helping uh, users and developers be able to easily extend the system and be able to do things with the SCADA data, for example, like adding analytics through uh, Python libraries. Uh, secondly, as I mentioned earlier, as you know, we have the cloud VM support. Uh, we've been adding some great capabilities so that you're able to actually uh, have a remote operation center where you can access these screens that are within the plant through our web space technology via operations hub and also have higher level displays. And so this is really exciting. This really helps people that are more looking across plants or across equipments and lines have higher level views, but then also be able to dig in and help and support if there's something specific in a certain workstation or line. And lastly, we continue to focus all on the worker in regards to abnormal situations, how to help when it comes to early detecting alarms and having faster resolutions to alarms. All right, and so operations hub. So as Matt mentioned, this is our rapid application development environment, uh, low code, no code. We're really focused on here and adding more visualization components, which you'll see on the right, right hand side, some examples to make it easy for customers to develop the type of screens and applications they want. Uh, very quickly and easily and be iterative about it. Um, and also as we do that, uh, and we continue to be able to um, add capabilities that make this more of an uh, HMI builder as well, we're adding things such as OPC, OPC UA rights. Uh, and then if you look at the bottom, if it comes back to kind of the journey of what we're doing with Operations Hub, uh, there's three different uh, key areas we're focused on. Uh, the first one is what we call OT business intelligence. This is all about uh, doing things like historical analysis, having accessibility to users outside of the control network. So that could be a process engineer, that could be a plant manager, that could be a GM, that could be a remote user. Um, and so we've really focused on that for the uh, for the last year and a half, two years, is really adding capabilities to have that type of analysis and higher level dashboard displays. And secondly, on the MES side, it, Joe will talk more about this. You know, we're doing a lot of great new capabilities with new widgets and new screens and, and new interfaces for operators. Also, what we're doing is making it easier for users as they're building the uh, custom extensions off of MES or custom screens, uh, how to actually be able to access the data from the system uh, through what we call a data flow editor. And what, what this really does is let you be able to access multiple uh, queries or uh, REST interfaces or other types of sources, be able to transform the data so that you can visualize appropriately within a screen. And then thirdly, on the HMI SCADA side, uh, this is really gonna be a key focus for us uh, the year coming up. But we've started really this journey of making operations up now more like an HMI builder by adding things like uh, the ability to have a mimic widget, which is uh, what you do with that is basically be able to create something in both iFix or Simplicity as a screen, be able to publish an operations hub uh, as like, you know, it could be, for example, a PID screen, adding things like alarm widget, as I mentioned, having web space access for remote access for remote operators. And then also lastly, as I mentioned with the uh, prophecy batch, but just reiterate again, the key thing here is what you're seeing is across the portfolio, all runtime uh, applications will be within Operations Hub as our common platform. And with that, I will hand it off to Steve. Thank you, Rambir. <clears throat> Great to be with you folks. Uh, I'm Steve Pavlosky, responsible for uh, GE's Historian product, as well as uh, some other components of, of our portfolio, including, including drivers. Uh, and I'm going to focus today on what we're doing with Historian. So as we exited last year, we introduced Historian 9, which was really focused on 
large scale deployments. And as we move into this year, we continue our focus on enterprise scale data management. Um, and so that's along three key themes. First, um, enhancing system management and connectivity. Uh, the second being really helping our customers, especially in these larger systems, be able to extract more value from the data that they're storing. We recognize that data value doesn't come from storing the data. It comes from making that data available to your users and other applications. And then lastly, what can we do to further accelerate bridging the plant floor to the cloud at enterprise scale? So as I talk about each of those, it's really that this is really our focus. Um, so in the case of enhanced system management and connectivity, a couple of key elements. Um, number one, we're working uh, on a cross portfolio system health management solution that will be able to help you manage all of your prophecy portfolio solutions, uh, troubleshoot them and make sure that they're running better. Um, we're working with uh, this new configuration single pane of glass that Matt actually mentioned and Rambeer also mentioned. So uh, Historian, iFix, plan applications, all will live uh, as we exit this year in the configuration environment will live in a single container and you'll be able to see the interaction between those products. Uh, we're adding rich Python support. So just like Rambeer talked about with simplicity and moving into iFix, you know, we're adding a new Python collector uh, similar to the calculation collector today, but but allows the use of Python libraries to interact with your uh, with your historian data. And then as we get further into the future, right, we have an MQTT collector today uh, and we support MQTT endpoints to send data to the cloud. Uh, but we're going to make that richer. We're adding Kafka support. So, again, modernizing the infrastructure uh, and also starting to learn to leverage Kubernetes for managing the on prem deployments. Um, to, to create new high availability architectures. From an, an enhancing of creation of value perspective, um, we are adding a model to the historian. So just like uh, Rambier and the team added a model context to iFix with iFix 6.5, Historian 22, 2022 will have its own model service. And that model service will allow you to create context for the historian data it will be exposed via REST, so you'll be able to query the data and query the model via REST applications. Um, and it will also facilitate interfacing to BI tools, and, and we're actually doing some performance enhancements there as well. Um, and then lastly, um, and this is a little bit more as we look into the future, um, in we do expect in the first half of 2022 to have our first cloud native version of Historian. So, as many as, you, many as you may know, we introduced a Linux version of Historian back in 2019. We've taken that um, and are deploying it, making some architectural changes to create and the auto scaling uh, expectation um, to create a solution that meets the auto scaling and high availability um, capabilities of the cloud and bring that to the operational Historian market. Um, the, this solution will have the identical client interfaces. You'll be able to use Operations Hub. You'll be able to use X, the Excel add-in, just be pointing to a cloud instance of Historian instead of an on-prem. Um, we'll add in cloud service integrations to make it easy for you to integrate your OT data with your business system, such as data lakes and, and, and take advantage of the analytic platforms that are available in the cloud. Um, and as we go forward, we're really looking to how do we help both the on-prem user uh, take advantage of low cost cloud storage, make it easy to move from on-prem solutions to cloud solutions. And so we see this uh, fluidity between on-prem hybrid and cloud uh, being supported by uh, our, our very unique offering uh, in, this, in this world. Um, lastly, if you're not using Historian today, whether you're using a competitive product um, and, and you want to switch or you've got new applications, we do have some uh, very aggressive time-bound offers for uh, Aviva users um, and customers in the life sciences, power and oil and gas markets that allow you to take advantage of Historian at, 
at greatly reduced prices uh, of conversion. So if you if you aren't using Historian at your location, or if you've got mixed uh, mixed version deployments, um, we can help you uh, migrate to uh, to the power of Historian. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joe, who's going to talk MES. Thanks, Steve. Um, thanks for joining today, guys. I'm uh, Joe Gerstel, Director of Product Management for our MES products. Uh, looking forward to sharing some of the new exciting things coming out with MES uh, in our next release. Uh, as Matt mentioned, uh, this will be called Plan Applications 2022. And a lot of com a lot of things coming out in terms of, um, first in terms of faster time to solution. We're trying to reduce the time it takes you to do installs and upgrades and uh, get you moving faster in, in an environment of uh, in, in a downtime environment where, where you've, you your production system is down. The, the other thing we're trying to do is uh, allow you a way to build um, more logic into your system that allows you to customize it uh, better for your for your needs. So we're including a low code uh, data flow engine that uh, will be part of the whole prophecy portfolio. And everyone will be able to use it for um, for uh, either iFix or Historian or Plan Apps, whatever it might be. Um, we're we're making the upgrades more seamless. I mentioned this a little bit, but we are we are making these um, easier to do and easier to perform. Uh, so we've minimized the downtime that takes on the server already by applying database changes before uh, we actually do the the file replacements. But we're also coming out with a new concept of called a web client update, which could allow you to stay up to date with the latest web clients while um, while staying on the same version for a little bit longer. So we're trying to get you the new latest functionality faster and more conveniently. Uh, it's kind of an app store concept. Uh, we haven't quite worked it all out yet, but it, it's going to be much more effective than having to do a full hard update every time. Lots of user experience improvements. Um, the ability to capture images and videos and put them in your comments using the camera on your device. Um, a lot of um, uh, more integrations, so you can do customization uh, for the out-of-the-box screens. For example, we're adding tabs to a couple of uh, uh, additional um, applications, so you can add your own custom tabs. And we're adding uh, the ability to inject logic in some of the buttons in the custom in the uh, out-of-the-box applications. Um, a new genealogy app, we have a graph view now, so it's a visual, you can see your genealogy. We're adding more and more to that now, and in addition to that, there'll be a bomb um, item, a bomb tab in that app. Uh, a, new, a new app altogether called the Operator Log app, which allows you to do handover uh, on shifts, and allows you to create something that we're calling incidents. So perhaps something you want to track that uh, happened on the shop floor. Um, you know, there's a spill of some chemical or whatnot. And you want to track that as, as something that needs to be addressed and taken care of. Um, and then we're, we're, foc we're still focused on our one MES across all environments. So regardless of whether you're running process or discrete, we'll be able to handle that type of activity. And we're finding a lot of process folks do have a lot of um, discrete elements to their, to their manufacturing process that, that this can be helpful. So as we go further along, we're taking advantage of all the things in plant applications to um, to address some discrete capabilities, so you don't have to relearn things in plant applications. You can; it's all underlying same functions and capabilities um, that uh, allow you to, to move forward. So, Randy mentioned this, and, and Matt as well about Operations Hub and plant applications. So, Operations Hub is our no-code um, composable web client um, environment that allows you to build your own apps. Now we distribute, if you haven't seen plant applications lately, we distribute our uh, applications, the out of the box applications as components inside of inside of Operations Hub. We call them plugins and we're developing some, some widgets as well, some additional widgets that you can use more independently, uh, smaller pieces that you can, you can tack together. So you can make your screens look the way you want to look them. So an example is you see here, the bottom screen, the bottom screen is um, represents the plan applications um, information, uh, one of our web views that exists today. And you can shrink that up, for example, and put your other information from other systems, from plan apps, from historian, whatever it might be, on top of uh, that that information. Um, and then we all of this is built for mobile environments. Um, the tight integration between plan applications and operations hub 
provides security that you would expect from GE Digital. And then again, kind of wrapping up uh, what we talked about earlier, these are the new capabilities that we're expecting in client applications in December. Uh, in addition to, to these, um, there'll be some additional capabilities coming in January, right after that, a fast follow. Um, and this is, we'll use the new web client update, which is gonna be much easier for you to apply those. Um, but the, the things we talked about earlier, these are uh, same kind of elements right here. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is more ERP integration. I think we have 15 messages now to talk to ERP, much more extensive than we've had in the past. Uh, and then um, a lot of a lot of again doubling down on discrete where we talk about we're we're putting more effort towards that discrete component because we see it as a growth area and uh, expect some of our process customers to find value in that too. And the last thing I want to talk about is Prophecy Smart Factory, which is coming in November. This is our enterprise wide um, cloud environment for plan applications. So this is plan applications under the covers. Uh, it, it's uh, uh, obviously proven, and uh, there's no risk to, to use because there, it's a fixed price. You don't have to be concerned about um, racking up additional costs because you're using plan apps more than you would uh, normally uh, because it's all fixed price based on an um, annual price. These are hosted services, so no, no upfront cost for you. It's a faster time solution because we can get it up and running really quickly and provision the service as you need it. And it grows at your pace. Uh, we are we've taken a lot of care and effort into making this scalable and highly available. So uh, we're learning a lot of things here that actually will be able to apply to the on-premise products as well. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Prasad. Hey, thank you, um, thank you, Joe. Uh, hello, and welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Prasad Pai. Uh, I'm the principal product manager uh, for. Uh, our newest product in the portfolio uh, called Orchestration Hub. Uh, Orchestration Hub is also our first offering in the enterprise-wide uh, production optimization space that Matt mentioned in his in his portfolio slide. Um, Orchestration Hub is is focused on um, current customer problems um, that we've heard from uh, from doing multiple uh, rounds of VOCs with industry uh, with the process industry customers. And it's, it's focused on their issue of being able to effectively manage shared or master uh, product data, as, as they call it, uh, across, their, um, across their factory floors. Um, we, in, in listening to the customers, we, we kind of realized that uh, there's just these challenges in terms of um, how much rework or um, quality or, or compliance issues um, that uh, these customers struggle with uh, when you uh, when they don't have the right uh, master specifications or they don't have the uh, right master data as uh, as they manufacture products and this uh, this problem has only escalated as a uh, number of SKUs that customers are are producing through their single factories have increased or they have to dynamically change uh, based on um, demands that are coming from uh, from the market, or they have to change based on supply chain issues that they have, where they have to um, change materials or change suppliers, and being able to manage all these changes effectively uh, without a a system of record or system that can automatically help them transfer these uh, changes down to their execution systems has been an issue that we have heard from, from customers. Um, so what we, uh, what we did as part of uh, the product development cycle is worked with, uh, worked with some, of, uh, some of our customers. Uh, we had innovation customer partners that uh, partnered with us to help define what a solution map would look like for Orchestration Hub. Um, and uh, we have been able to do some uh, POCs with these customers to prove out um, different modules, uh, modules for uh, for a solution uh, under the orchestration hub portfolio. Uh, so, looking at um, when we when we think about orchestration hub, what we are what this particular product or solution is catering to is is the quality or the process engineer persona, uh, whether it's it's at a enterprise level or whether it's at a plant level. And when we think about this persona and what he needs to do uh, with this information. Um, we laid out certain themes that um, uh, 
that we heard from customers would be highly useful for um, this persona to ensure that all of the product related information um, is is synchronized as it changes in their uh, master data systems and that could be an ERP system, a PLM system, it could be a legacy system that they use uh, where they put in all of this information. Um, so when we when we looked at um, some of the high level themes, uh, one of the key and, and this is kind of the central pillar of orchestration hub is the concept of being able to orchestrate product master data. And um, this ability, um, this particular capability allows the customers to take uh, specifications, bill of materials, recipes, route information from any of the master data systems they may have, uh, unify all of this information together into a, a product data context, and then move it down to their execution systems. It could be an MES system, a batch system. It could even be down to their SCADAs. Uh, if that is what they what they intend to do, um, while doing this transfer, what we also realize is um, that customers wanted flexibility at the site level to be able to deviate from some of these specifications, and that could be because of existing inventories they may have, or that could be because of some unique configurations on their equipment that they may have at the factories. And um, so, to provide that flexibility. Customers wanted to ensure that we we track these variances that each site goes through as well. Um, today, customers have these variances, but it's not tracked, and it gets harder and harder as you as customers adopt more uh, more products or more SKUs that they produce in their uh, in their facilities. The gap in variances uh, keeps on increasing. So they needed a tool to be able to manage these variances, be able to analyze why why such a variance happened or how many times um, does the variance happen. And, and so the uh, product data variance management capability allows customers to be able to uh, record these variances, do an audit, audit on these variances, look at you know, how many different sites are uh, in variance from master specifications. So that's the capability that, um, that we intend to provide through that module. Um, then looking at very process-centric customers, customers who operate in highly regulated industries, customers who operate uh, where um, there, are, uh, there are compliance issues, uh, that's where the enterprise recipe management capability is, is of most value. And um, what we heard from customers is they are not just looking at control-centric recipe management, they are also looking at recipe management more from a liability standpoint, more from a licensing standpoint, more of an enterprise governance tool to ensure that recipes are, are used in, in compliance, they are uh, modified in compliance. So that's something that they, they are expecting as part of this module. And, and then where the customers want to get to once they organize all of this product data is to be able to analyze, look at correlations, look at relationships of, of how, how did a particular material change impact uh, impact the product quality, or even look at did it increase the uh, the time that they had uh, they spent in manufacturing the batch, or even uh, simple things like you know did it affect changeovers, and did it affect the time in um, that they uh, number of changeovers or the time they spent in in changing over to uh, to adopt a new product, and um, we we hope that as we as we collect all of this information, organize this information, that some some of the analytics that we will be able to provide as as part of the tool as well. Um, our first release um, for orchestration hub is is planned for end of the year, and what we plan to deliver as part of this uh, uh, this release is the is the central pillar for for the solution, which is product master data orchestration. Uh, as part of this release, we are uh, we are focusing um, and we are going with the theme of the no no code low code uh, concept of how how customers would go about configuring applications. So we are providing a connector service to be able to connect to all of the ma master data systems that customers may have to gather the information, gather uh, specification data, bill of material data, recipe data. Um, then using our operations hub product, design a a OT level product data management UI where we collect all of this information, pres present this information in a in a product context so that uh, users are able to then decide on whether they just um, 
transfer all of the master specifications down to their execution systems or they deviate from it or go through some quality permits that they may uh, they, that they may re request from higher level uh, quality personnel and then while they are doing that also record all of these changes and variances that each side does and give the give the customers the ability to do variance management as um, as they transfer this information so that's basically the um, the first release that that we'll have um, at, at the end of the year so with that i'll hand it over to matt thank you prasad i'm so excited about this new initiative uh, orchestration hub so I want to talk analytics. Um, you know, we talk about process optimization. So you know, analytics is obviously a key facet of that. Um, really, when we think about analytics, we think about it in these four different tiers. Um, the first is around cloud analytics, and really, we see this as being for customers who want enterprise level, enterprise wide uh, optimization routines. The next level is cloud data aggregation, and again, this is. Um, this is enterprise focused. Um, this is our manufacturing data cloud product where we see aggregating data together as an effective way to accelerate the development of analytics. The third is really around on-prem control loop monitoring and optimization. And you know, really the, the sort of difference here is you know, we, have, we have our offering CSense, which is really targeted at the shop floor user because it is often plugged into real-time control. Um, and again, it, it does, you know, it does a whole bunch of things, uh, five in one closed loop capabilities. And then the, the last category is around embedded analytics. And this is really where, you know, an example of that is sensor health, which we released earlier in, in uh, 2021. Um, and this is really where we find specific analytic applications and package them up as a, as a you know, dedicated uh, application. So I'm going to talk about what's, you know, what's new this year. The first is operations analytics. And so this is a new offering from us, and this is really around cloud-based analytics. Uh, and this is a, an enterprise-wide platform that allows our users to easily develop their own uh, process optimization routines. You know, across our portfolio, we're, you know, talk about low code, no code. And this is another example of that because this application is designed for the non-data scientist. It's really designed for the citizen developer. And what makes it really unique, I mean, in, you know, is in addition to the fact that it is, you know, a drag and drop, you know, graphical environment to construct your analytics, it comes with a set of pre-built templates that solve very specific problems. So for example, if you want to do a predictive quality application, it already has the right algorithm selected, already packaged in, you know, like a, a self-contained uh, learning loop. And, and really all the user has to do is wire up their quality inputs to start generating an accurate prediction of, of quality. And so this is true for a number of different areas. You know, we have production throughput templates, energy efficiency, uptime, reliability, and so on. So talking about, you know, aggregating data, you know, uh, we continue to iterate on uh, MDC, our manufacturing data cloud. What's new uh, for 2022 is uh, a number of, um, you know, continued improvements around performance and data model enhancements. But in particular, we've introduced a BI starter kit. Uh, so we have more than 40 report templates that are designed for BI, Power BI, as an example, and really enables the, our customers to quickly leverage the data that they've been collect, collecting in a tool that they're familiar with, uh, Power BI, for example. Um, and again, you know, it's, it, it, and the reports have been a big hit with our customers. They really see instant value out of it. So again, another exciting thing. Um, Relative to on-prem analytics, um, we do we continue to enhance uh, CSense. Um, you'll see this is CSense 8.5. Uh, it, it happened just before we uh, we nailed down the 22, uh, 2022 naming. Um, so this year it'll be known as 8.5, but in subsequent years you'll see it as CSense 2023 as an example. But in this release, um, we've uh, again we've made some uh, improvements around installation and usability, making it easier to, to to use and install. But in particular, we've introduced a new feature, a PID control loop tuning, and then also a system identification assistance. So two assistants that we've added 
that really help the user evaluate their control performance and then make changes. Um, so again, focusing on the theme of leveraging analytics for you know shop floor plant uh, control improvement, um, we made uh, some great improvements here. And so I do want to finish off with uh, reminding everybody about our unified portfolio launch. I hope you've seen a ton of great stuff and we're super excited about it. Um, I do again want to uh, thank you um, on behalf of the whole panel and uh, GE Digital for joining. And uh, we really hope this was helpful. And, and again, thank you for joining.